Okay, today we're going to be looking at section 7.2. <coughs> um, it's co-functions, double angle and half angle identities. Um, some of the objectives, we want to use co-function identities to derive over other identities. We want to use double angle identities to find function values of twice an angle uh, when one function value is known. Um, we want to use half angle identities to find function values of half angle uh, when one function is known. And then simplify trigonometric, trigonometric expressions <coughs> using double angle identities and half angle identities. So um, from the start, we're given uh, some co function identities. These um, should match up with uh, ones that are in your trig cheat sheet. Um, however, some of them, uh, you'll notice you'll get uh, different versions when we get to the question part. But anyway, you don't have to have these memorized. You just need to uh, be familiar with them and then be able to look them up and use them as needed. Um, here are some examples uh, kind of showing you that um, if you have a sine of some angle and you add a half, it's the same as sine, and then um, you give an example with when you add that it's equal to cosine. Okay, so that <coughs> sine, if you add a half, you get this new red angle, and that's the same as cosine. So this is kind of where those half angle identities come into play, just kind of seeing it visually. Um, and then you have uh, cofunction identities for sine and cosine. So normally we have um, as you see from the first page, let me go back. Normally, it's the half angle minus some other angle theta. So you got power two minus theta. However, on this page, we're given um, the angle plus or the angle minus pi, and so those will give you different values. So the positive will be positive with sine. Uh, when you subtract, it'll be negative when you're dealing with sine. Now when you deal with cosine, it's the opposite. So the positive angle will yield a negative, and the negative angle will yield a positive. So some examples, and then we get to double angle identity. So here are the double angle identities. So for sine, you get this identity. For cosine, you have three different versions. Um, they're interchangeable. You can use whichever one seems fit. And then you have one for tangent. And if you ever have to find a tangent, you can remember the tangent identity is equal to sine divided by cosine. And then we go over half angle identity. Now, the half angle identities are a little bit different here on this version uh, compared to what we're given in our trick cheat sheet. So I may use one or the other, whichever one seems uh, the best, uh, but most likely I'll try to use the one that we're given in our trick cheat sheet. So let me go over really quick the trick cheat sheet over here in Blackboard. So here they are up here. Let me zoom in. So here are those half angle identities. So you notice this is sine squared, one half, one minus cosine two theta. Compare that with this. It's the same thing. They just have the one half factored out. Um, but then they they take this equation and they just manipulate it ever so slightly, and they get what we call a, a different version of the half angle. So um, it should be equivalent. They are equivalent, not should be. They, they are equivalent. So um, just know that what you see in the trick cheat sheet is a little bit different from different form from what they give you in the textbook. And then just here, they're just showing you <coughs> if you have, um, for example, this tan of 1 over 8, they um, rewrite it in terms of the half angle based on the formula that they gave. So tan power 8 is something divided by 2. Um, 
And when they solve that, they get power 4. And then from there, they plug it into the formula. And then this is what we come up with. And then simplifying. So these are values that they plug from the unit circle. And then you combine like terms on the denominator. You do keep change flip and you get this process. And then you rationalize the denominator and we end up with this form. <coughs> so um, just be aware. Um, I think it should work out if we did the other form, but just be aware there are uh, some subtle differences in those formulas. Right, and then other than that, it's, it's mainly just being familiar with the formula, being able to go back and forth and use them um, as needed. So we'll jump over to my math lab and start working some problems.